common question I get asked all the time is this, how do I work on scales? And that's what this video is going to be all about. Hi, I'm Donna Schwartz from DonnaSchwartzMusic.com, the site to bring your playing up to the next level. So a common question I get asked all the time, how do I work on scales? Now the first thing that I do want to cover is why do we work on scales? Why not just work on a whole bunch of songs? Learning a whole bunch of songs off the radio by ear or just getting sheet music. Scales are super important. They're like building blocks for melodies. So the more scales that you know, that you're comfortable with, that you can do from memory at all different speeds, all different types of rhythms, well, that's going to make you a better reader. It's going to improve your ear training. It's going to help you to be able to pick out melodies quicker, whether it's by ear or even reading. Okay, so scales are super important. And there's, um, well, this leads to the next question. Do you just work on your major scales? No. Now, there's, there's a, another part to this answer because I can say to you, no, you should learn as many scales as possible. But if you're a beginner, you're not going to do that. A beginner should definitely start to work on major scales only, okay? But the overall answer is, should you just work on major scales? No, you're going to work on as many as possible. And there's tons of scales, okay? What I want to give you is kind of like um, an order of scales to work on, you know, for beginners and then going up to advanced folks. Now, there are so many more scales than what I'm going to list here, but these are the most worked on, the most popular scales, the scales that you're going to see or need if you want to work on jazz standards uh, or any types of jazz and also classical music as well. Now, the order I'm going to give you is going to depend. You know, if you're a classical player, you may not need to worry about blues scales or bebop scales as much as a jazz player would, okay? Um, you're going to be working on a lot of different things, okay? So I just wanted to put that point out there. All right, so order of scales to start with. Well, again, I said it before, your major scales. And when you're doing your major scales, you want to really focus in on each one. You don't just want to play one up and down and I've got it, no. You want to play it slow. You want to listen to the relationships between the notes. You want to make sure everything's in tune. Um, and you want to have good timing when you're playing them. Um, I just had a student earlier who was playing his scales and he pretty much knew them, but he played them with uneven timing. So uh, he did something like this. <laughs> I had a hard time following him, to be honest with you, because I, I was like, all right, wait, does he know it? I don't know, I'm not sure, wait, what? <laughs> That's what I was feeling. So when you practice your scales, you've got to do it with a metronome, okay? You've got to have good timing. You should also, um, if you're a beginner, definitely use a tuner, because you also want to make sure that your notes are in tune, um, and you want to hear the relationships between the notes. Okay, so you're starting with your major scales, one at a time, and get it so that you get it down. Now, if you're the type of person that's studying out of method books, like the Rubank series, R-U-B-A-N-K, great series, very boring, very dry, but very good. Um, if you're studying out of those, they're not gonna necessarily label those scales right away. You're gonna be playing scales, you're gonna be playing parts of scales. Um, they're not gonna label it right away, okay? Until we get like towards the end of the, uh, the first book, the elementary book. Um, which is a good thing for beginners, okay? But you're really going to work in that one key and just really get that scale down. Then you progress to the next scale. You do the same process until you get through all 12 major scales. The next scale that I would recommend, it actually, it's not a scale per se, it's a mode. If you take that one major scale, let's say it's, a, let's say it's concert C. So on the tenor that would be D, on the alto that would be A. So here's your major scale. I'll just do this one octave. Actually, I should have done it the lower octave. I'll do that next. Um, from that one scale, you get seven modes. The scale that I just played, the, my D major scale, is really D Ionian. That's a major scale. 
Um, the next mode is Dorian. So if I'm in my key of D, well, I'm going to start on the second scale degree of the D scale, that's E, and I'm going to play an E scale starting, uh, I'm going to play an E scale starting on E using the key signature of D. <laughs> Different sound there, right? It sounds more minor, okay? It's a mode. It's the Dorian mode. The next mode is the Phrygian mode. So you can kind of see what I'm doing here. I'm going to start in the third degree of that D scale, which is F sharp, and I'm going to play up to F sharp and back down, thinking the key signature of D. <laughs> Okay, you get the idea. So that's the Phrygian mode. Starting on the fourth degree of the D scale, that's G, that's going to be a Lydian mode, G Lydian. And that sounds like a G major scale that's wrong, okay, because there's a C sharp in there instead of a C natural. Um, you're going to start to hear these little things and start to equate them with things that you may know already. After the Lydian mode is the Mixolydian, very popular in jazz, just like the Dorian. So I'm going to go up to the fifth degree of that D scale, and that's going to be an A, and I'm going to use the key signature of D, all right? So that's what, this is what that's going to sound like. The next mode is going to be Aeolian. Now, this is going to be on the sixth degree of the scale, the D scale for me. Um, so that's going to start on my B. Now, when you listen to the scale, it's actually the natural minor. Okay, so this is what this scale sounds like. The last mode is called the Locrian mode. We tend to use this mode when we see like a minor 7 flat 5 chord, okay? And this starts on the 7th degree of the, uh, the scale that you're working on. So for me, it's going to be C sharp. And then we end up on the D again. So those are the modes, okay? Now, some of you may be asking, should I just go up to, you know, like, let's say D to D, E to E, F sharp, to, or should I go up to the ninth? Or what is the ninth? Okay. If, uh, whether it's jazz or classical, you should do both ways. So play the scales the way I just did. And, you know, of course, with a metronome, um, play them up the octave, but then also up to the ninth. So that's like one step higher. Okay. The ninth is like the second. All right. It's just up an octave. So, Let's say I'm doing the Locrian mode again. It helps to slot the scale better, but more importantly, it's important to know the ninth degree of the scale, and that gets into jazz and some other things, okay? So you've got your modes, all within that one scale. Now, again, do you just practice them up and down? No, there's many things you can do with those, but that's going to be for a future video. Okay, so let's see. Major scale, you got the seven modes within that. Okay, the next thing that I would recommend from that would be the pentatonic scale. Penta, five, tonic, tones. Okay, so again, concert C, my key of D. So it's going to be the one, two, three, five, and six of that D major scale. So think that through, and it's going to be this. Usually we go up to the upper octave when we do this. Some cultures use the pentatonic scale exclusively or a lot in their folk music, okay? Um, it's a very familiar sound. It's a comforting sound. There's not really much tension in, um, in that scale. A lot of rock guitar players tend to use a lot of pentatonic scales when they're, when they're soloing and doing their riffs and stuff like that. And a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, rock saxophone players tend to use 
pentatonics and types of pentatonic scales. The major pentatonic scale is a good one to know after you learn your major scale. So this way it gives you some more options, okay? And again, I'm going to say the same thing. Don't just practice it up and down, okay? Move around with it. Now after the major pentatonic, if you're a classical player, you may not feel the need to do the bebop scale, um, but it's not a bad idea because it's going to build your technique. Now with the bebop scale, you're taking your major scale, so for me it's D, I got two sharps, F sharp and C sharp, I'm going to also add the flat 7 to this. The reason why is because the bebop scale slots the chord tones of, let's say, a D7 chord right on the beat, okay? When you're, practicing, when you're practicing this scale, you should start from the top and go down, all right? That's generally the way that we tend to practice this scale. Let me show you what I'm talking about. And actually, let me put the metronome on. So that's the bebop scale. So you're doing the flat seven to the, uh, to the major seven and then to the root on the top. But start on the top of the scale. So that to me would be a good progression. So major scales, pentatonic, bebop scales. Okay? And the bebop scales are going to be on like seventh, dominant seventh chords. Okay? Now let me sidetrack for one second. You're probably thinking, She's playing that kind of weird with that metronome. The metronome's not beating on every beat. You're right. I'm actually thinking, perceiving the metronome beating on two and four. Okay, so um, let me do that example again. I'll just do it one octave. Okay, it's just another way to practice. There's many, many different things you can do. You don't have to do it my way. Okay, um, the next thing that I would be thinking about would be the minor scales, all right? And there's three minor scales, so to speak. You've got your natural minor. We spoke about that with the Aeolian mode, okay? So again, uh, let's say I do in the key of D, let's say, uh, B, B minor. I went up to the ninth at that point. Uh, then the next one would be the harmonic minor. And the harmonic minor, well, it's the same scale that I just played, but instead of the seventh being flat, okay, instead of the seventh being, like in my case, an A, I'm going to raise it, okay, so that the seventh is going to be a half step away from the, the top root. So in other words... <laughs> It sounds a little weird. It actually sounds really cool, to be honest with you. A lot of cultures tend to use that harmonic minor scale um, in their folk music. And, you know, really advanced jazz players also use that scale and, I guess, variations of it when they're improvising. The last, the last minor scale is the melodic minor scale. Also popular with a lot of jazz folks. I just saw an ad from Jamie Abersold's site, jazzbooks.com, for a whole book on studying the melodic minor scale. Uh, you could check that out on his site, again, jazzbooks.com. The melodic minor sort of sounds major on the way up, except the third is flat. And then on the way down, it goes down a natural minor scale. So something like this. Okay. We, tend to use, we tend to use that a lot in classical music. Um, you'll see it. You hear it, actually, within you know, some of the great classical pieces where we're going up the scale, we're going to raise the sixth and the seventh degree. We're going down the scale, we're going to lower it. Okay, So those are your three typical minor scales. And again, I'm not counting the Dorian mode or anything like that. Okay, um, then we get into the minor pentatonic. So the minor pentatonic scale, the five-tone minor pentatonic scale, is not going to be one, two, three, five, six. It's going to be one, three, four, five, seven. Okay, like this. This is concert A um, minor pentatonic. <laughs> Okay, 
I just did the top octave, you know, as well. Now, that's a pretty cool sounding scale. There's not much tension in there. And a lot of rock players tend to use that scale, solo on it, jazz players as well. Now, the next scale is the blues scale. And all you need to do is take that minor pentatonic and add the sharp four, the sharp fourth degree of the scale. So, now for some folks, it's a very um, familiar sound. For some folks, that was like the first scale that they learned. I don't necessarily agree with that, but you know, to each his own. I think you need a basis before you get to the scale. Um, the other mistake that people make, and I talk about this exclusively uh, in my Jazz Improvisation Explained course, you don't want to just play that scale over a blues, okay? Because it's boring, it's predictable. Okay, so you've got your blues scale. Now, after that, we start to get into a little bit more advanced stuff. And here's where we get into diminished scales. Um, there's your regular diminished scale. <laughs> And then you have your, I call it the inverted diminished. The regular diminished scale is whole, half, whole, half. The inverted diminished to me is half, whole, half, whole. Now there's different uses for each one. I'm not going to get into that right now. This is just about the scales. Um, there's only really three, okay? Uh, you're going to start to notice a pattern. You do want to learn them starting on every note, but there's really only three, okay? Now, after the diminished scales, I think it's important to learn the altered scale. The altered scale starts off the same way as the inverted diminished, but then ends up in a different place. So let me show you what I'm talking about. <laughs> Again, that scale has certain uses for it, um, especially with minor tunes. But right now, we're just working on the scales. And you know, work with a metronome, do it slow, hear the relationships from one note to another, and uh, you know, do different patterns on them. OK, then another scale to know is the whole tone scale. And this is actually really easy, because every note is a whole step away. So let me start on D. <laughs> Okay, and again, there's only three of these as well. All right, so those are the scales I'm going to mention for now, all right, because that's, that's enough. <laughs> it really is enough. Um, I didn't talk about, you know, taking the minor scale and, you know, starting on um, each, you know, part of that, each note of that scale and making a scale out of that. That's, again, you know, that's, this is enough what I've given you. And this is a, not only a start, this is more for, um, I went from beginner to like intermediate players. And it's not just a question of putting your fingers down and just blowing. You've got to understand what you're doing. You've got to understand how the notes relate to each other, how, what the uses are for the scale, you know, the sounds, being able to move around the scale. Okay, so that's my order of scales that I would recommend. Now, I'm going to talk about resources, more resources in a future video, but I do want to mention one, and it's from my fellow uh, podcast host, Nick Manella. We host the Everything Saxophone Podcast, which is an awesome podcast. We've interviewed many amazing people like Jamie Abersold, Derek Brown, Jeff Koshua, Roxy Koss, um, Greg Fishman, okay, lots of great folks, and with more to come. So if you want information on that, I'm going to put the link in the show notes, but it's saxophonepodcast.com. Check it out. Check us out on iTunes and subscribe. Um, anyway, my podcast co-host, Nick, wrote a book recently picked up by Mel Bay called Comprehensive Saxophone Warm-Ups. Now, I feel his book is good for the intermediate player. It, goes, it makes you go through the major scales, um, some patterns in there, arpeggios, um, 
let's see, uh, major scales, minor scales, all the three types of minors, patterns in there, um, patterns with the arpeggios, all that type of thing. I feel that's good for intermediate level players, okay? Players that know their major scales for the most part. You're gonna be expanding your range in this book. I'll have a link in the show notes. Um, it is an affiliate link. I get a couple of bucks for each book, but um, I really think it's worth it. I wouldn't talk about it if I didn't think it was worth it, okay? So that's my answer, the first part of my answer to how to work on scales. There's a lot more, okay? I didn't even begin to talk about arpeggios, but you could do the same thing with your arpeggios, and there's a lot more resources out there. But I'm gonna leave that for future videos. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed this video. Press subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Click on like, that would be awesome. Share it, that would be even more awesome. And check out my website, donnaschwartzmusic.com, for great uh, information, videos, all those types of things to help you boost your playing and bring it to the next level. Thanks for joining me. Take care. Have a great day.